My best friend decided to backstab me in one of the worst ways possible. Guess what she does? She goes behind my back to get with my brother. Ew! But there's more to this story because I did something to her, but it doesn't stop there. Let me tell you exactly what she did after she got with my brother. So, I just crashed my enemy's wedding. Please don't jump to conclusions thinking that I'm a bad person. Let me tell you why and what happened because I'm here to seek some help. All our lives were told that we should be cautious around even our friends because it doesn't take long for them to turn into enemies. We scoff at these old sayings because we don't want to believe our friends could be nasty. And sometimes to the point where you just can't take it anymore. I've come to believe it now ever since my only best friend turned into my enemy. And honestly, I regretted ever believing that she was a nice person. Things have gotten so messed up between me and her that I had to do what I claimed to have done in the beginning. Guys, uh, let me take you into the gist of how I ended up taking such a nasty step. Hello, I'm Daisy Daisy, <laughs> and I celebrated my 30th birthday this month. It was such a lovely day, but never mind that. Okay, so the person I'm calling my so-called enemy is Lisa, who's also celebrated her birthday. Don't worry, she's not my twin sister. However, Lisa used to be my best friend during my university days. I met her in the first year of college, and our twinning was spot on. She was the best listener I could have ever hoped for. I would tell her all about my, quote, catch feelings or seasonal flings. She was more into books and less into romance, so she would only talk about the characters she would have a crush on from literary text. She seemed to have the a Stockholm Syndrome because she used to like those characters who were nasty to their girls at first but would fight the bloody devil once they fell for her. I left my parents' home as soon as I turned 18 years of age. They were well off and never really cared about me or even my younger brother. Even my birthdays were celebrated by my friends at school. My parents would either be busy with their business or on some sort of business trip. However, I continued to use the credit card whose bills would be paid for by my wealthy father. My mom is a fashion designer, so she never really had any time for me ever since I was born. Several nannies brought me up, and Lisa, knowing I was living alone in a family condo near the university, would bring lunch for two. I would give her a ride home after class, and I just remember it was our spring semester when we offered a course. It was opted for by many freshmen and sophomores. Lisa and I joined the course too. It was there where we met the guy from the sophomore year, who would become the reason for the feud between Lisa and myself. You see, Lisa saw the guy during our first class, and the expression on her face was contorted. On my asking, she confessed to having a little bit of a relationship with that guy. Well, I was surprised, because up until now, I thought that she was into dudes and books only. I asked whether she still liked him and also how they broke up. She said that he wanted more attention than she could provide, and so they mutually decided that it was not working for him. I looked at the guy, and he was really tall and handsome, with eyes having a light shade of leaf green color. A few days passed, and Lisa never picked up that guy's topic again, but I wanted to. I was clearly having a crush on him, to be honest, and for a week, Lisa did not come to college as she was ill. One day, I was sitting on the second seat from the corner of the row, and he came and asked me if I, well, was the first one who was reserved. I smiled and said, no, it's not reserved, and he took the seat and sat down next to me. After the lesson, we had a bit of small talk, a bit of chit-chat. He was polite, I liked him. He did not know I was Lisa's friend, and a week later, when Lisa came, I asked her if she was okay with me liking and talking to the guy who was now her ex. At first, she was surprised, but then she told me that it would not bother her as long as I did not forget about her after getting together with that guy. I assured her that it would not be the case, obviously. Being the one who takes the initiative, I pursued that guy openly, and soon he reciprocated my feelings. He and I started going on dates, movie nights, and weekend trips, and 
We were having a lot of fun together, but something had gone wrong in the middle of it all with Lisa. I don't know what happened to Lisa, but she started to ignore me. One day, she came to class but did not sit with me, and I waved at her, pointing that, hey, I'm here. But she still looked away. I caught up with her after class, and she said she had to work on assignments and was leaving early. Well, I offered to drive her home, but she said that she would take the bus that day, so I let her go, thinking she would come around on her own. She did not, as she continued to show her indifferent side to me for the next few days. She would not bring lunch to me, and after our class one day, I finally cornered her and forced her to tell me what was happening. She said nothing was wrong, but then admitted that she also started liking the guy I was dating, meaning her ex. She said that she wanted to pursue him, and I told her that she was being insane. How could she even confess that to me, knowing how invested I was in my relationship? In addition, she was always awkward and had an aversion to the guy whenever he and she crossed paths during the class. He had come to know by then that Lisa was my best friend, yet he never talked about her rudely, which did not really change our relationship, so I told her that she could not pursue him since I was the one who liked him. Can you believe what she asked of me? She asked me to split up. I know she's my best friend, but uh, in hell, I would never agree to that kind of appeal. On my refusal, she came to have the raging look upon her eyes and told me that she was not happy with my stance. Then she said that she wanted her ex back as if that would make a difference to me. I outright refused to listen to her, so she left. As she was leaving, she told me that I was no longer her friend and that she would not stop there. Do you know what's problematic here? It's not that she wanted her ex back. No, it was her raging eyes and insane demand that made me wonder. Did I ever know this, Lisa? She was a whole different person than my friend. Our friendship vanished like a waning moon. It disappeared entirely with no sign of reconciliation, and time passed. We graduated, and we never saw each other again. Now, in all this drama, do you know who the guy is in this? He's my husband, Stephen. After we graduated, Stephen found a decent job, coincidentally in my dad's company. The day that he proposed to me was also the day I told him about Lisa and our feud. He said his feelings would not change for me and he would not leave me for anyone else. Well, I told my parents about him. And as always, they obliged with my decision, and I know it's more than anyone, but my parents are just passive characters and my perfectly sinking with each other, as they never stop me from making my own decisions. Only a year later, my brother Noah introduced me to his new girlfriend, and get this, it was no other than Lisa. It did not make sense. She just smiled at me when we first met and acted as if she didn't know who I was. On a side note, she looked different, more beautiful, and had a different hairstyle. Her wispy bangs fell to her forehead as the bun on the back revealed her long neck. If she wanted, she could easily seduce a man. My brother, who was younger than me by a year, announced during a family dinner that he would marry Lisa this year. I felt my guts ringing when I realized Lisa would become my sister-in-law. I cornered my brother and asked how he met Lisa. You know what he said to me? He said that he frequented a cafe where Lisa also frequented, and they met there. A girl who has been allergic to caffeine all her life would frequent the cafe. <laughs> it was something I could not digest. Lisa was never a cunning woman, but maybe I was wrong about her. Let me tell you why I'm saying this. Lisa ignored me all the time during the family dinner, and only stole glances at my husband, thinking I may not be noticing us. After dinner, I found a moment where I could talk to Lisa, alone, in private. I asked her what she was doing in my house with my brother, and why did she decide to marry him, who was clearly not her type. You see, my brother, he was the submissive type, and would not fight the devil if one day his girlfriend decided to break up. He would simply accept the fate and set her free, instead of clinging to her. 
Lisa had a proud expression upon her face, and she said the most infuriating thing in the most graceful manner as she said, You would not know, Daisy. I pray you be restless. You see, I had no strong motive, nor did I need one to crash Lisa and my brother's wedding. In my gut, I knew she didn't really love Noah with all her heart, because she never looked at him the way she continued to glance at Steven. But I tried to convince Noah by asking him, please, not to marry Lisa, but still. Despite his adoration of me, he refused to listen. He wanted an answer, a reason, but I had none to give. I didn't want to tell him the truth about my suspicion, because it would have only hurt him in the end. How did I crash the wedding, you're asking? Well, it was simple. I went missing. I turned off my phone, did not show up at the venue, and sent an eerie message to Stephen that said, Help me, Stephen. Noah paused the wedding ceremony to go and look for me. And I knew he would, because even if our parents didn't care about us, our sister and brother bond where each other was our safe place. It was our home. When I left the house, Noah made it a habit to call me every single day, and I made it my habit to help support him as a big sister. Now, I've still got, well, not gone home, as the wedding was in the morning today, and I did not go to the venue, but I was around to see what was happening without being noticed by anybody. I didn't know what to do, now that I've pulled off this act very well. I don't know what strong reason I can give to my family about my absence, and my text to Steven. Lisa made me do something I would never have done if her feelings were true. But I know that she is no saint, and she has not simply shown up after a year of my marriage with Steven. So you guys tell me, how could you just not be vigilant even around your friends? They would turn into enemies before you even know it, so my question is, am I the a-hole for simply believing my instincts and acting the way I acted? I'm not asking you to help me clean up the mess, because both practically and logically, it can't happen. But I would want suggestions from you. Maybe some comments down below, and tell me what your opinion is and what I should do now that I've done what I've done. Uh, how will I go home today? Guys, please help. Comment number one. Give me a break! Did you literally do that? One of my fantasies so far has to be, well, to crash somebody's wedding. So, no, I don't think you did the wrong thing. Some people just deserve that, you know? I mean, this Lisa sounds like a really, really nasty person. How did she become your best friend in the first place? Maybe she was always like this, nasty. But you cannot see the side of her yet. I know it sounds bitter, but the truth is always bitter as hell. If I were you, I'd simply go home and make an excuse to bail out. By the way, if all of you have is a gut feeling about Lisa, then how will you stop the wedding next time? You're stuck, sister. Maybe just duck her and live your life with your hubby. I'm sure your brother will wise up and, well, he might even divorce her. Comment too. Are you even sane? You know what's the problem with people like you who just act on their instincts and then come back home making excuses to wash off your mistakes? You guys are annoying, impulsive. To be straightforward, you're stupid. Calling your family an enemy cuts both ways. You're no saint either. So let's not pretend you're all righteous. I even sympathize with poor Lisa. In the end, you literally left her for a guy and that too, her ex. Don't you understand? How can you shamelessly claim to be her best friend? Mind you, you destroyed a person's happiness just because of your bloody instinct. Ugh, I got goosebumps thinking about how heartbroken the couple would have been. You've got some atoning to do. I'm waiting for your update because I really want to see where this goes. Update number one. Hey guys, it's been a month since I've came back and, well, it's time to update you about what happened after I pulled that stunt. The act of going missing in order to crash my brother's wedding. You won't believe what happened that day. Ever heard of a miracle? Yeah, it happened. You know what? God's always backed up the people who are righteous and I'm one of them. The day as I was pondering to go back home and come with an excuse, 
I received a text from an anonymous number. I opened it. It was an image of Lisa. And guess who else? My husband. I was enraged to see what I saw in that image. Lisa was in her wedding gown. In fact, I guess it was the image of, well, the same day. And she was clearly leaning over Stephen as if she was trying to kiss him. Stephen was just standing there with his face close to hers, and even if they weren't actually kissing, or maybe it was the image that got captured before the kiss, I lost it. I mean, how could I not? I was raging like the bull on the street when I saw that crap, and Lisa was not the only problem. I never believed that even Steph could cheat on me with his ex. And who the duck that anonymous cinder was, I have no idea. But it was proof I did not do anything wrong that day. I used that image to go back home and deal with both Lisa and Steven. And I knew that if I showed that image to Noah, he would understand and my step, well, would be justified by all means. Lisa and Noah were sitting on the couch beside my mother while dad was in his office. And Steven was pacing in front of them back and forth. When... I reached my parents' place. Stephen saw me and ran to hug me tightly, asking how I was and where have I been? I did not respond and simply went straight to Noah, and Noah got up and hugged me. He asked me if I was A-OK, -okay, and my mom said that she was glad to see me safe and sound. Lisa also got up and said that she was worried sick about me. Ugh, I looked at her and said, oh, you didn't have to be. She low-key grinned a bit, and Noah asked me about my whereabouts. So, I told them that I did not want to attend the wedding because I was not happy with Lisa getting married to Noah. Noah looked at me confused and asked what the heck you meant. I looked at Stephen and pulled out the image on my phone, and I showed it to Noah, who looked more angry than I was. He asked Lisa, what is this about? While looking at Stephen and said, what's happening? What are you two doing together? Are you trying to make a fool of me? He looked at the image and said that he did not know what was happening and everyone looked baffled at the moment and completely forgot about my disappearing act. My mom went to look for my dad saying she knew how to handle it. Lisa held Noah's hand as, well, a gesture of begging him to listen. She said it was just a mistake. She just slipped up, and Stephen was standing there, so he was just helping her get back to her feet. I chortled at her response, and eventually heard Stephen repeating what Lisa had said. I told him that I was having none of his lies anymore and left the hall. I paced towards my room, followed by Stephen, who begged me to listen to him, and I knew I loved him so much that I inevitably gave him a chance to speak. He said, what Lisa said was true, Daisy. Please, don't get it wrong. I only helped her. I asked him what he was even doing in the bridal room, and he looked dumbfounded at first, but then told me that he had gone to give a piece of jewelry that Noah had asked him to deliver so he could wear it. Later, I confirmed this information with Noah. He agreed to send Stephen there. It's been a month since all this happened, though. Noah's decided to postpone the wedding, so I'm guessing he somehow believed that Lisa did not really try to do something obscene. I think Noah has his doubts, but I'm not sure either. Now, some of you said something in the comments against my, quote, impulsive acting. Are you all just Malfoy? I mean, to Lisa? Remember, even the evil one in Harry Potter was a Malfoy. You see, I could not care less if Lisa had the same opinion of me. I could not be happier than give her a taste of her own poison. I know people got a lot of crap to point out on me, but I'm also going to say that I respect you a lot who are supporting my actions in the comment section. Lisa must have tried to seduce Steph. I'm going into depth about all this because my instincts is never wrong. Well, see you in my next update. Update number two. Well guys, I didn't really expect myself to come back with another update, but here I am after a whole month and a half to tell you about all the crap that I've been through. You won't believe what odd turns things have taken, but there has been one thing that I must make clear in the beginning. Do you remember I talked about going in depth into Lisa's intention of marrying Noah? 
Well, everything revealed itself to me in the past few weeks. Let me give you a quick rundown. Even after listening to staff during the image incident, I could not muster up the same compassion for him. My love for him was now eclipsed by the shadow of doubt, and he knew it, and so he became extra cautious around me, always walking on eggshells, and never bringing Lisa's name or the wedding up. After a couple of weeks, I received some more images of Lisa and Stephen getting cozy, or at least it looked that way. I confronted Steph as to what was going on. I did not know why he was not telling me the truth. I was constantly thinking, is she done with me? What about our marriage? After much bulldozing, he finally spoke up. You must believe how shocked I pretended to be in front of Steven after he told me the truth. I knew that something was going on. I mean, red flags. Lisa must have taken his hesitation to tell me the truth and take it for granted. She thought that she could do anything to him since he was not planning to tell his wife, which, you know, that's me. But I know how to get the truth out of him. <laughs> he revealed. Lisa had been seducing him even before Stephen and I got married, and this really was something I could not process. It felt like a glitch in the Matrix. I mean, was he hiding the fact that Lisa has been finding ways and opportunities to seduce her ex and my then-husband? But why? I wanted to slap Stephen so hard. That woman was one step away from bewitching him to making out with her and he just let her have her way i was so mad so damn mad i asked him to get out of the house as we were back at our place and he wouldn't leave rather he asked me just to hear him out but i could not anymore you know ah uh, honey uh, i didn't tell you because uh, i i didn't want you to feel hurt or betrayed Bullcrap! You just did it, Stephen! For a whole week, he tried his best to show how concerned he was about my health. He almost looked all gloomy and depressed, and one day he confessed. He confessed his love for me. He told me he did not want our marriage to go downhill. He was ready to atone for his mistake, and he said that he wanted to tell Noah what Lisa had been trying to do with him. He said he wanted me to understand that his feelings for me have always been true. I heard him because I also did not want things to turn the nasty for Steve and me. We decided to tell no. I was going to show him the images of Lisa trying to do her business, and Steven's going to tell him the truth as well. I'll be sure to be early to update you about it. I'm sure there's so much drama upcoming. I'm just waiting to tear the pretentious face mask off of Lisa. Update number three. Truth knows its way to come out, ladies and gentlemen. It always does, and I'm so glad I believed in my gut and crashed that wedding. Lisa is such an evil person. She's nasty, she's vile, she's disgusting. Do you know why was she ready to marry Noah? Well, I'm here to update you all about that. The whole week, intense revelations and heartbreak incidents. Let me just recap. I went missing, which postponed the wedding of Noah and my university enemy, Lisa. Lisa was the ex of Stephen, and she suddenly wanted to marry my brother. Yet, I received her images in which she is clearly at a not healthy distance from my husband. Stephen revealed the truth, and we decided to tell Noah about Lisa's doings. Early this week, I set up a meeting with Noah. He was not expecting what we revealed to him at first. I showed Noah all those images that I've received from some anonymous well-wisher of ours. He did not look shocked at all. Rather, he looked at Stephen and asked to hear his side of the story, and Stephen revealed one by one every single incident that was captured on the images. He said that Lisa tried to get close to him, even on the day that she was to get married to Noah. Stephen had to lie because he didn't want me to be hurt. Noah asked him if his silence was really a morally correct stance that he took, and Stephen just fell silent. I knew Noah must have felt nothing more than heart broke. He was strong and did not want me to console him when I tried. He said he would confront Lisa on his own and would ask her if all her compassion for him was just a lie. At first, I thought it was okay for him to do that, but 
Knowing the bewitching persona of Lisa, I asked Noah to instead help me to get the truth out of her. We planned to include Stephen, and the next day, Noah called Lisa and told her that he was calling their wedding off. He put the phone down without saying much after that, and just an hour later, who's at the door? Lisa. But I was the one whom she found there waiting for her. I looked at her and smirked. I asked if she's happy now that the wedding would not happen, and she was angry, and I could tell from the look on her face that she wanted to punch me. She came to me and started absolutely yelling that I was the one who ruined her life. She asked me if I was the one who's manipulated Noah looking around while she continued to say that she loved him. I told her there's no need to pretend anymore because it's only me here. Noah had already left. For the first time, I saw her expression change that fast from all pretentious to hostile. Lisa confessed, finally, because as soon as she started yelling at me, she blurted it all out. She said she wanted to get back at me, for I not only took her love from her, but also had the audacity to boast it on social media. She wanted Stephen back, not only because she had that rekindling of feelings for him, but also because she could not see me happier. After losing contact with Stephen, after he got married to me, Lisa wanted to find a way, an excuse to be closer to him. Noah was that way for her. Now, I hope you all get my point as to why I said in the beginning that Lisa is evil. She didn't care about my poor brother's feelings at all. She never gave a damn about the consequences of her actions, and while she was blaming me for wrecking her life's happiness, Noah and Stephen came out of the room they were in, and they were listening to everything that Lisa said. Lisa's face turned pale, and Noah threw his tuxedo that he had worn on the wedding on the ground right there in front of Lisa. Lisa went silent because she must have known by now that the truth had come out. Noah stormed out of the hall, and Stephen went after him, and I simply asked Lisa to get out. I even threatened her that if she ever came near me to the family, I would get the law involved, and she looked at me in the eye and said, I... I wish you to never find happiness, Daisy. Oh, thank goodness to decide now. Get out! After everything happened, Noah went on a vacation much needed. He just needed a break. We all did. So I got Stephen to take a break and, well, for us to go on our own trip. I want to thank everybody for your support. I know you want to know who that anonymous person was who sent me all those images. But, I guess we'll never know. Update number four. Hey, I thought I would not be updating after my last update because that was really it. But I was wrong. I saw how so many people are wondering who that anonymous sender must have been. Okay, so I myself finally got to know that the person's identity just a while. So, I immediately came to write this update. It's been about two months since I wrote my last update, and you see who the person turned out to be? Guess. It was my brother. It was Noah. It was Noah himself. He texted me today saying he wanted to confess something, and he said he wanted to tell me this for a very long time, but simply could not find the right opportunity or the right words. Once he revealed that it was he who sent me those images, it all started to make sense crystal clear as to why he postponed his marriage so easily after I crashed it. I sent him many questions. When did he find out that Lisa was seducing Stephen? Why didn't he tell me earlier, and why did he not approach me directly? Many more. But he said that he cannot answer these questions right now because he has not gone over what Lisa had done to him. She broke his heart, just like that, without even realizing that his love for her was immense and true. You might wonder why he did what he did, but I'm not going to force it out of him. I have my guesses, and you may have yours, but I think he did not approach me directly because he must have felt that Stephen and Lisa both are making a fool out of me and him. That's all I can really think of right now. I don't know what that jerk must be doing now, but who cares? Comment number one. I'm really happy for you, Daisy. I'm 46, but I also had a similar experience happen to me. 
When I got to know about a woman tempting my husband, I first kicked that woman out. And then I took care of my husband. How could he be so easily tempted by this girl? I mean, you took a risk at the beginning, but oh goodness, it could not have been better than this. I've read your story and your updates, and trust me, Noah came out victorious. I hope he finds someone better. Comment number two. This is why I have trust issues. Can't even trust your friends in this nasty world. Ugh, I hate that, Lisa. I have a friend who'd act like her, always flirting with my boyfriend even when I was not there, but my baby told her to stop it. And that was the best day when I saw her leaving us alone because she was so embarrassed. If I were to say something about Noah coming out as the anonymous sender, then I'd say that Noah is the mastermind here. Dude, he set that board by himself. But hats off to your courage that you finally got rid of that nasty Lisa. Okay, so the craziest part to me about this story was the anonymous sender was Noah. I honestly did not see that one coming. I want to hear from you guys, though, what exactly you thought about this story. Would you have done something different if you were in OP's position? A lot of people were saying, hey, OP struck first by going after her best friend's ex, and that's the reason this whole thing went down. Yeah, that makes sense to some commenters, but I want to hear from you guys. So drop your comments downstairs. Let's discuss this one. If you guys are new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories every single day. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you want more daily videos, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow, but just remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya!